Hello， 大家好，好久没讲 LK 9 9了啊！今天看了默默的知乎更新之后啊，发现了有一个有意思的视频。呃，这个视频啊，就是呃，加州呃查普曼大学纪念这个阿哈罗诺夫教授诞辰。这么一个学术研讨会，哎，这是其中呢有一个超导的视频演讲。那这个演讲者呢叫阿尔门古里安啊，就是前不久呢从美国海军啊拿到十万刀经费的那个教授啊，做这个超导调查的。那这个视频啊，实际上是纪念这个以色列著名的量子力学物理学家雅克尔·哈罗诺夫。教授诞辰九十周年的这么一个会议，呃，那么这位量子理论和这个实验领域的顶尖科学家啊，他的一生啊可以说贡献卓著啊，成绩斐然。呃，阿克哈罗诺夫呢是一位物理学家，他出生在一九三二年啊，是一位以色列物理学家，专攻量子力学。啊，他是加利福尼亚查普曼大学的理论物理教授和这个詹姆斯法利自然哲学教授。啊，同时呢，也是所谓圆周理论物理研究所的特聘教授、特拉维夫大学名誉教授，以及这个以色列高级研究会的主席。那阿哈罗诺夫啊，他一生最著名的贡献呢，就是和他的导师 David Bohm 一起啊，预测并发现了著名的阿哈洛夫伯姆效应。啊，这个效应表明啊，量子粒子可以受到没有直接与其相互作用的经典电磁场的影响和干扰。那这个发现呢，就揭示了量子力学和经典力学它这种深刻而神奇的相互作用啊，推动了物理学的发展。那在他的职业生涯后期啊，阿哈罗诺夫教授呢又倡导了具有挑战性的。弱量子价值理论，那这个理论认为呢，量子力学中的这个随机事件，它是由未来世界引起的。量子系统的行为啊，它是可能受到未来测量的影响，所以这个理论呢，就体现了，呃，量子力学的这种时空概念和经典物理学的这个差异。可以说啊，它挑战了我们对时间和因果的这种常识的认知。但是这个理论呢也存在争议啊，很多人认为呢，他过度解读了量子测量过程。那这个高寿的阿哈罗诺夫教授啊，今年八月份刚过完他的九十岁生日，那今年九十一岁了。那作为一位多产的这个科学家啊，他迄今已经发表了三百多篇的研究论文，对量子纠缠、量子计算这些领域啊，有重要贡献。哎，他也是美国国家科学院和以色列科学与人文学院的成员，并且获得过沃尔夫物理学奖，还有很多的荣誉。阿哈罗诺夫教授的一生成就啊，可以说开拓了量子物理学的这个新领域，哎，也必将激发后人啊对量子世界这些奥秘啊进行探索。下面呢就是这个纪念会议上关于超导研究的完整视频，我加上了中英文字幕，做一个 action， 和大家一块看一下。But I didn't know that Hamiltonians can be. So I know Yakir since this time, 2010, and uh, at that time our laboratory already was at uh, Maryland and uh, close to Washington D.C. And when Yakir arrived to to uh, receive the medal. Jeff arranged our meeting, and we were with Yakir for uh, uh, receptions at National Science Foundation, at Office of Naval Research, and um, uh, I was very, how to say, impressed how uh, simple was Yakir's behavior. He wasn't surrounding himself by a Wall of greatness, and uh, it was the usual person. And we were discussing and discussing from the very first moment of our meeting. And uh, I still keep uh, the napkins, which uh, were used during the discussion of physics of superconductivity and quantum physics at this meeting. And um, this was this was. Uh, Even more、uh, impressive when we were at、uh, National Science Foundation, and Yakir said there some words 
which I remember until now, he said that when I am attacking some problem and uh, trying to solve it from this angle, that angle, and eventually is getting solution, then I am telling how stupid I was. It was so simple and, and it was, uh, and when he said this phrase, it resonated to my mind because I am also behaving in that mode. So and since then, somehow, my soul is entangled with, with Yakir, and uh, I am very grateful to be here. And I decided to do something which really will be interesting for Yakir, first of all. And uh, um, this is what, after our first day of meeting, next day, Yakir gave me his book with this, uh, with this write up. And uh, that wasn't the only present which I received. This was personal present, but there was another one which is related uh, with, with basic science. Uh, and this is sort of gift of the same sort which we were discussing yesterday and the day before. Uh, and I would like to spend a couple of minutes for this. Um, this was related with uh, time dependent, with, with, with generally uh, the question. Um, we, we all know that uh, superconductors can be described by wave function. However, how deep is this uh, analogy of superconducting wave function with quantum mechanical wave function? That is not a simple question, and even Ginzburg and Landau they, after, uh, who, who originated this theory, and original theory was static. In static case, the uh, relationship between psi function of Ginzburg-Landau and Schrodinger's wave function is more direct. And, but, but when you will go to time-dependent uh, problems, you will see that uh, time-dependent uh, Ginzburg-Landau equations are not similar to the Schrodinger equation. And because of that, probably uh, the originators never were talking about wave function. They were, they were using terminology psi theory. Psi theory and not more than that. So, uh, and when we were discussing with Yakir, Yakir uh, uh, told me, but Armin, if we will go ahead and use imaginary Hamiltonian, it will immediately become like Schrodinger type of equation. So, and that was, and, 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 and uh, <laughs> mathematically I came to that conclusion myself before, but I didn't know that Hamiltonians can be imaginary. And that is what I learned from Yakir. He says that in cavities, in, uh, uh, in some situations with, uh, 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 quantum uh, quantum uh, problems, you can have purely imaginary Hamiltonian. And this is something which is bridging, is setting up very, very interesting bridge between superconductivity in terms of time-dependent Ginzburg-Landau equation and, and Schrodinger equation. We will, we will talk about that a little bit later, but one example I would like to show why this is important. Uh, next slide will show uh, uh, time-dependent problem which is being described in terms of uh, Ginzburg-Landau equation, the equation which I just was showing. So this is animation. On uh, this slide, on this slide, uh, this is psi function. Uh, at time equal zero, it is constant. Then we put current through it. Current is bigger than critical value and it consists of three components, supercurrent, normal current, and interference current. And uh, you will see now what will happen, how interesting will be this dynamic, dynamics. Um, just let me click on it. Where is the oh, page up? Let me see, uh -huh, here. So psi function goes to zero, at some point it will uh, reach zero value, and uh, current components are converting into each other. Total current is constant. This is one dimensional wire, very simple quantum mechanical problem or physical problem, 
Simple, simple wire and current is moving through it, constant current, but dynamics is complex. It's very complex, very interesting, and what is interesting that here we have a sort of measurement process when quantum entity Cooper pairs are interacting with normal electrons and eventually psi function is getting damaged temporarily at this point, but then it comes back and this is only one simple example we can solve using time dependent Ginzburg Landau equations, many, many more complex uh, uh, problems, and in which case we have this kind of uh, interaction between classical system and quantum system, and, uh, and it is, for me, it is very interesting to include fluctuations and see how fluctuations are ruining and making it irreversible coming back of superconducting state or quantum state. So unfortunately, I haven't had, sure? Why does it come back after the, after the wires are normal? Uh, well, that is what, because, because uh, this is called phase slip centers. Uh, this, is, this point is phase slip center. Uh, phase is jumping by two pi and relaxing, uh, and then the system comes back. So it's periodic. It's very well studied system, yeah, experimentally and theoretically. So, uh, but as I said, it, it contains very straightforward example of quantum classical interaction and on the language in the language of quantum physics. So um, I am very sorry. I, I wasn't able to go deeper in this in, uh, using this bridge because you know laboratory life is not leaving too much time for theory. And maybe at some point I will get sabbatical and we'll be able to do more in this area. But what I did, I wrote a book, uh, which in particular contains this example also, including the code. And I would like to present that book to Yatir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. OK. Happy Thank birthday. <laughs> yeah, it was, so the book was dedicated to my teachers. Uh, it has dedication inside, and the Akil is one of my great teachers, so uh, I am happy I can do this. Now, uh, so what would be interesting for, uh, for the audience and for, uh, for the Akil, the talk will consist of two parts. Part number one is related with our laboratory activities. So uh, we, we did something related to our own bomb effect. Uh, topic was discussed with Yakir about mm, two, three years ago, before, before COVID. And uh, COVID, of course, interrupted. And uh, uh, we spent more time with some other issues, not laboratory work. I will tell about that too. But I will tell about this. And uh, all these topics will be uh, covered. Then the second part is uh, with superconductivity because uh, Shmuel called me and said that you know Armin, I talked to Yakir and he's interested to hear about room temperature superconductivity latest, latest arrival. So we will discuss that in detail. That will be second part, uh, I think. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me set this clock so that I would like it to tell me. Uh, okay. So, um, so what is going on in our laboratory related to quantum science? Um, this is a problem which which was touching very deeply. Uh, um, why cannot we we detect? Uh, our, our own bomb field locally. Uh, we know that if we will surround it by a closed loop, uh, there are different ways to do that. We will see it, uh, the, uh, the Arona bomb field and the Arona bomb uh, effect. But uh, uh, why cannot we do that locally or quasi locally with some quantum object 
which my, my uh, belief was that quantum objects may be able to feel uh, presence of the AB potential locally. Um, well, Yakir told me that it is probably hopeless, but nevertheless, uh, um, he said that try. Uh, try, it will be very interesting if result will be positive. So um, I will explain how this works. So, uh, um, of course, this uh, uh, idea is sort of not, not uh, very uh, acceptable. However, suppose that we have superconductor. This is superconductor. Uh, we are cooling it down, and we have here superconductor set up. This is, again, result of modeling. So uh, we, we set superconductor up, and this is a strip which we will put current into that strip. And uh, uh, if the AB potential is along the strip or opposite to the strip, uh, it may be that in the dynamic case, and the dynamic case is when we are putting the current pulse, uh, the dynamics will be slightly different when uh, the current is along the AB potential and when it is uh, against the AB potential. So, um, and what happens uh, in principle to do that, you don't need to change the direction of the uh, vector potential itself. Vector potential can be statically here uh, so that we will not have electric field related with its dynamics. So what we will do, we will just reverse the polarity of current. So once we will give current from uh, here to here, then backwards. And uh, when you model that, the modeling uh, uh, provides uh, this kind of pattern. And depending how long you will wait, you can, in principle, break completely. This blue color is normal state. These are uh, flux quanta, abricosa vortices. So um, when it is parallel and, and anti-parallel, for the same time of duration of the pulse, you can have this picture, and you can have this picture, which is uh, distinguishable by, by classical instruments. You can, you can uh, see voltage here, uh, no, no voltage here, and the larger voltage here, big voltage here. So uh, for that, we need a bridge. To have a bridge, we need to make it. So that was the task. And uh, this was interesting for uh, US Navy and they uh, suggested, uh, they offered uh, money for uh, very skillful experimental groups, but these groups said that it is too complex experiment and we are doing quantum computers, qubits, and so on and so on, so we have no time for that. So it was necessary for us to take the job, and we started to make uh, bridges. So this is one of the bridges which we made uh, from niobium-3 thin uh, material, material. Uh, relatively, relatively narrow, narrow. Uh, but, but as I said, we need to put, need to put a current, current and then, and then uh, uh, reciprocate uh, its direction, direction, in which case we shouldn't have we shouldn't hysteresis, have hysteresis. Because if we have hysteresis, have hysteresis, hysteresis, hysteresis should be caused by our own potential, potential, but not by the bridge, by the bridge itself. itself. So it's turned so out that we have, we have without any Aron of bomb potential, we have uh, hysteresis. And uh, when we started to uh, look at our properties of our bridges, and at that time, it's turned out that uh, there is a big wave in uh, superconductivity physics related with superconducting diodes, because using this, you can make a diode. This is how it works. So uh, you put sinusoidal current. Uh, through, the bridge, through the bridge, but, but you have voltage, you have spikes, voltage spikes, and, uh, uh, and uh, here it is zero it is potential, zero potential and, the and the average potential in this direction is not zero, not zero. so it is working it's like working classical like diode, diode, but in superconducting super material, material, which was, which was uh, uh, by, itself by itself interesting for interesting sponsors. For sponsors. So, um, so um, we. Uh, uh, we, we were not the first who did this, but we were uh, the first who uh, raised the frequency to 100 kilohertz. Until that, it was for very low frequencies, like point, point 0.1 hertz, 2 hertz. Uh, and uh, we were able to go to 100, and, uh, and, uh, and it was published uh, when we submitted 
to FISREF B, uh, it was uh, January 6 when we submitted. In February 6, it was accepted, and it was printed also in February. So I never was expecting this kind of pick from FISREF B. Uh, just uh, because somehow our finding resonated with what was of their interest, uh, probably. Uh, then, uh, when uh, we uh, did this, we tried to understand how this diet works. It turned out that uh, you can explain by modeling again using time-dependent Ginzburg-Landau equation uh, behavior of the diet. So this is the bridge. And uh, I now will click on it, and uh, the dynamics will start. So this uh, asterisk here, blue asterisk, is moment of time. So this is a current uh, versus time. You will see. Uh, let me do that. Um, so see, uh, it is starting to move, and at this point, it will create some voltage. See. Vortices will start penetrating through the edge, and, and, and that will build up voltage across uh, the bridge. Then they are gone, and uh, we are coming now to the re reverse polarity maximum, and the vortices will try to enter through this edge, but will not be successful. So pay attention to the color. Color again is showing the psi function density, modulus of psi function. So see, it is, it, they are trying, but not able to go in. And then uh, uh, the, process the process continues periodically. So this is one, this is second. So we have, we have spikes only when, uh, when vortices are coming from the top. Because this edge is uh, weaker, uh, for this uh, process to take place, you need to have broken time reversal symmetry and broken inversion symmetry. So uh, the edge is breaking, difference between edges is breaking uh, uh, um, uh, centrosymmetrical uh, uh, arrangement and, uh, um, and uh, magnetic field which is applied perpendicular, weak magnetic field which is applied perpendicular to the field, film is breaking time reversal symmetry. So, uh, uh, because we understood this much, it, it was uh, interesting, uh, it, it generated a novel idea. Novel idea was, oh yeah. uh, novel idea was, if that is correct, let's do the following. So, from the top, uh, uh, vortices are, uh, of flux quanta are penetrating themselves. But uh, well, from the bottom, from the bottom process, process is not successful. Is not successful. What if we will if we facilitate will by injection, by injection artificial, artificial injection of vertices, of vertices uh, facilitate, uh, facilitate that, that process. process? So we were injecting, injecting the first one, one and then, and then uh, that, uh, is, uh, that, is, uh, that is triggering uh, the whole train, whole train of, 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 of flux quanta, quanta, which means, which means that, that if this will work, will work then we will have some kind of valve or like transistors, like because transistor, transistor means that, means that it is not it is going, not but going. if you are applying something, something, you are making you are it go. Making so uh, so uh, it will be analog, analog superconducting analog of transistor, analog which will be very useful, useful for, for the same, the same uh, uh, say, quantum, quantum computers, computers or uh, uh, circuits, uh, circuits like that. Like that. Then uh, yeah, it's turned out turned that out it really worked. Really worked. So what we so did, uh, this is our laboratory-made device. So um, device is the following. This is just the real device picture. So this is major part of the bridge. So current is being put from here to here. And these are auxiliary leads. Uh, through auxiliary leads, we will uh, inject additional portion of spike of current, which will generate here uh, the vortices, and then the whole bridge will become normal. It's turned out that it works, and uh, I am showing it here. This, this panel shows with plus 50 uh, uh, Ersted uh, field and minus 50 Ersted, you can have, without injection, in absence of injection, you can have dioding. So this is dioding, and this is dioding. But in, if at this moment of time, I will apply current through these two leads, 
As soon as I'm applying, I'm getting symmetrical. Uh, see what happens. Very interesting. So bridge is completely restoring its normal, its normal uh, appearing voltage due to normal current uh, flow, or, uh, due to existence of uh, of of, of uh, flux quanta there. As soon as we will stop current through the auxiliary leads, it it will be gone, and and again and again. So. Uh, this was very interesting, and we again in our device was about three to four. It wasn't very big gain, but principally it is not too bad. So if you will have gain factor of three four in the very first device, you can improve this. This is, by the way, lithographically patterned system. So uh, um, again, we uh, we. Uh, uh, we, uh, we, call we call this quadrister because it has four, four leads four required for required its operation. operation. So, so with uh, two uh, auxiliary leads with small current, we were able to uh, switch on and off much bigger current. So uh, again, it immediately was uh, this time uh, applied uh, uh, physical, uh, physical review applied, I think that is the name of journal. They themselves suggested us to publish it there. So we submitted it uh, by, 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 by invitation, so, and, and they published. They peer reviewed, of course. It, it took longer, but it was, we addressed all the referees' comments and questions. So uh, we are lucky this happened. So uh, at that time, uh, Andrew organized Andrew here, here a very interesting, uh, I don't know, seminar or conference. And uh, one person was Francesco Giazotto. Uh, he was um, very, he, he made very impressive talks and uh, he has very good group in Italy. And uh, somehow we, we made friendship remotely. And, um, and he was talking among other things about about new material, rhenium-based superconductor, which inherently has built, uh, has built in time reversal symmetry breaking and inversion symmetry breaking. So you don't need magnetic field, you don't need artificial uh, bre symmetry breaking. So uh, when, when we learned about that material, we said, why wouldn't we do that material? And uh, and uh, Francesco also uh, uh, had his own interesting idea, so we decided to submit a proposal which was about very uh, sensitive orders of magnitude better than, than existing uh, these days in, in the world, since uh, single photon detection detector. And uh, unfortunately, NSF decided not to, uh, not to invite us to write after white paper, it wasn't accepted. However, we decided to keep things running and made these films nevertheless using our internal resources and sent them to Italy. So he was very, he was very excited and uh, his graduate student these days is doing something from that film and this is our deposition system. So I will come back to it later related to room temperature superconductivity because it will be important ingredient of our plans. So this is a film which we made Uranium-9 niobium, niobium, which has uh, uh, rather, rather good uh, critical temperature. And uh, uh, let's see what will happen with it. But we will do our own bridges from that material also. It is just uh, we haven't yet had a chance. So um, now the s next part, uh, next small part of our uh, Activity was related with gravitational waves, but I don't want to spend too much time on it because, again, it is published in Physical Review Research, and uh, uh, it is like, in very brief, it is um, two uh, um, um, barbells attached to uh, two squids here and magnetic field which is not moving. But when but the uh, bridges are moving, consider them, consider these guys as screeds. So two screeds, two gigantic screeds or macroscopic screeds, I would say, yes, they don't need to be gigantic. So when uh, they are moving in opposite directions under the influence of gravitational wave, they are generating electric, electric spike, 
electric voltage, uh, electric signal. So uh, we call this GFS because gravitational wave energy through magnetic flux energy and superconducting transducer goes uh, to, uh, to, uh, to work. So, uh, and this is its sensitivity here. So uh, this is not yet pushed to extremes. This is uh, what was uh, re re reflected in our publication. But I think that we have uh, ways to, to, uh, to improve it further and to compete. It is already com com competitive, but it can be improved, especially in view of yesterday's claim, which from John's report, we probably need to think about super oscillatory approach to gravitational wave detectors also. We haven't yet but done that, but it is necessary to think in that direction. So interesting thing came about gravitational wave detectors from Schmuel because he called me and said, Armen, in physics today, on the back cover of physics today, this guy is made, uh, made some very precise big G measurements and so on and so on. So I also looked at the journal, found the article, and contacted him in Switzerland. And he, d he agreed to collaborate with us and to be part of our future proposals. So this is a very good uh, 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 collaboration. It would be very good, because they are very skillful with mechanical parts. We are not skillful with mechanical parts of gravitational wave uh, instruments. Uh, we um, know superconductive part of it, but not mechanical. So he will be very helpful. So, and the new building is coming uh, soon, uh, next year, probably at this time, we will be transferring the equipment there. So this is the old Kielefer School, this is the new laboratory building. So uh, I would like to express um, gratitude to Chapman administration, and Jeff told me that Yakir was very supportive of the idea to have experimental lab for in the Institute for Quantum Studies. So probably the Daniele, Daniele didn't ignore that point of view, and I am grateful to both Yakir and Daniele for that. So we will be here, then we will have younger generation helping us, and things will progress much faster. Now, second part. So uh, room temperature superconductivity, LK99, and so on. So let me forward because it is uh, not too much time. Uh, so this is uh, the whole history of superconductivity. Uh, it was very dramatic, actually. And uh, these uh, red lines are showing the breakage of uh, axes. So from here to here, you see 10 years increments are 10 years. From here to here, I mean, uh, Increments, increments in time are here. So uh, <coughs> then here there are five years, five years, five years, and here it was 40 years, 40 years. For 40 years, at eight, during eight years, we reached somewhere here. And now we are moving much faster, and the same happens with the critical temperature. So here it is 30, 40, 50, but here it is, uh, so 10, 10 is the step, and here the steps are 50. So the axis is different. But what is interesting, there are two main, two main mainstreams uh, of, of superconducting uh, materials. One of them I would call BCS type, second, or we will call non-BCS type, or better to say electron, uh, electronic, electronic mechanism, or electronic, they call it these days charge transfer super exchange. So uh, this is electronics, main electronics mechanism. Uh, and uh, it is very interesting that YBCO materials, they were this uh, charge super, uh, super exchange, they reach this island about 150 degree, uh, but, and stop there for a while. Then uh, BCS superconductors uh, start to uh, do more progress, and I think that this was predicted by Ashcroft, and uh, this has nothing extraordinary. It is only using light element, because hydrogen is light element, and related phonon modes have very high frequency. Because they have very high frequency, BCS expression is showing that critical temperature should be high. However, the problem is here that we, uh, we uh, need very high pressure for that to happen. And when uh, this was first reported in 2016, uh, 
uh, there was first uh, uh, international workshop in Italy, which we attended, but second were organized here. So these are attendants of part of them, not all of them but part of attendance of that superconducting meeting. And um, the guy who was originator of that big wave is this uh, Russian physicist working in Germany, Yeremets. And here he is at Chapman giving the talk. And this is schematically how this is working. You probably know it is uh, anvils, then the diamond anvils you need to squeeze to very high pressures. So at that time, it was 203 Kelvin. Uh, but then, and very recently, Dr. Zias from Rochester, he was able to rise uh, the critical temperature uh, to room. Uh, but that wasn't the major achievement. The major achievement was that this time he was able to reduce pressure to 10 kilo uh, bar, 10,000 atmospheres. And 10,000 atmospheres is something which you can, in semiconductor technology, you can just use the interaction between material and substrate. That will be enough. You can using big, uh, and and um, uh, uh, constraint uh, generated by the substrate is able to create pressures up to not only 10, but 30. So in principle, it is possible to try to reproduce his uh, results uh, without any applied pressure using thin film technologies. And we were planning to do that. It is very interesting, the story that because uh, his first article in Nature on uh, relative material was withdrawn by the editor. And nevertheless, Nature is publishing his second article on the same topic because probably uh, the reviewers found nothing suspicious or nothing wrong as much as I know that uh, they allowed or external reviewers to come to their lab and watch how this material works. So uh, it is still not withdrawn and, uh, and the activity related to that uh, now is not as, as um, how to say, within the um, intention of uh, researchers because another material arrived uh, which is appetite, appetite, I think that is English pronunciation, but in Greek appetitos means, by the way, unconformed, unsubstantiated, so it's a little bit sarcastic. However, scientific name is oxypyromorphite. So uh, it, is, it is this material and you can make jewelry of it, and this is, uh, uh, it, it is interestingly known 70 years already, more than 70 years. So, um, so what was reported? The group is in Korea, and the first article was uh, in uh, Korean language, and uh, it was submitted somewhere in March. So uh, at that time, probably nobody uh, paid much attention until they published in Kondmat. So this is the material itself. So it is ceramic material. They said that what they did, they replaced one of coppers, uh, one, of, one of lead by copper. So instead of PB10, we have PB9 copper. The rest is, is uh, as I wrote. So this is the material. And you have force drop at above 100. This is now centigrade. Temperature now is not in Kelvin, it is in centigrade. So, and it is coming down to zero. And what is interesting is that uh, they estimated their value of resistivity. And resistivity is in this zero state. Resistivity, they wrote from the range 10 to the minus six, 10 to the minus nine. Uh, 10 to the minus six by itself is one micro ohm per centimeter. Uh, for comparison, I should say that good conductor like copper at room temperature have that kind of resistance. One micro, micro ohm. So, but this is nano ohm going down to nano ohm. So this is better than uh, good, uh, the best known uh, normal conductor at room temperature. And uh, this was the first signature which they reported. This is their second signature, which is like uh, magnetic susceptibility and field cooled versus zero field cooled. And you see it is going negative. Uh, difference is negative as it should be. And uh, 
different, different, different materials, materials show different values. values. This one is this 10 to the minus 4, four but this is 10 to the minus 1. And this, one. Is, relatively this is relatively big, big diamagnetism. And uh, they and said they that their levitated object, object, which we will look at it in a bit, is made is out made of this out material. Of this material. So, this so this is the, uh, the uh, levitation creating, creating material. material. So, so magnetic, magnetic signature, signature is here. Is here. Then, then other, other, other two, other uh, two uh, 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 properties, properties, critical current, current versus, versus uh, uh, temperature. Uh, temperature, it behaves, it behaves, as, it behaves as it should. So, so for lower, lower temperatures, temperatures, you have higher you have critical, critical currents. Current. For, higher for higher temperature, we have low. low. And the same and the related with magnetic, 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 uh, with, uh, uh, yeah, magnetic, magnetic field. field. So at room temperature, room temperature applying different magnetic field, field. this is zero air state. state. Critical the current is big. Current then it is becoming smaller, smaller, smaller. And it is quite symmetric, both here and here, as it should be. So when I was talking to our potential sponsors, and I told that maybe it is a little bit premature, premature to, consider to consider this uh, uh, as enough evidence, enough evidence to support, support us, us. They, said they said that what are you, what you missing? Are you is something something, something is something absent there or something, or something can, be can be criticized? They said that they we said think that, that, that you should you should, you should start, start working on that. that. So we so got we some got money from ONR for this, for this problem, problem to be to handled in our laboratory. But the news is that most likely government will soon announce on DARPA level Level, big program, big program in, the in the United States related States to this. this. And this is uh, from that from previous, previous uh, plot, plot how, how, how the critical how current the moves down, down with the field, the field and how critical how current goes, goes up when you cool it. You cool it. So, um, of course, of this, course is, uh, this is somewhat, somewhat smaller, smaller values, values for critical for current, current uh, or critical uh, field, I would say, but, but, but uh, uh, this is 0 0.3, 0 0.3 Tesla, 0.3 Tesla right? right? It is relatively small, but, but material, material itself, itself, we need to, uh, we need to uh, distinguish, distinguish between, between properties of material and properties, and properties of, the of the sample. So if it is ceramic sample, sample with granular, granular structure, structure and, and especially, especially multi-phase, and I have no doubt that it is multi-phase, then critical values can be relatively small. Uh, the authors of original report are continuing to improve their understanding of what's going on. This is from the initial publication I compared with the updates which they provided. See, initially they were thinking that conductivity goes on between lead and oxygen, but later they understood that it is between uh, copper and oxygen, a a copper oxygen chains, like uh, very similar to what is going on with oxide high temperature superconductors. And, uh, and uh, now, now I would like, I would to, like spend to spend a little bit time to discuss the criticism, criticism which is generated by other, by other groups. groups. So, uh, so uh, and, and, and by and us and also, by of us course, also but uh, at, at the same time, same time uh, see what uh, see they what say they you say should do. You should take this substance, this substance and this substance, and I mean these two substances, and the solid state synthesis process will generate this one. However, Arithmetics, arithmetics is not coming, is through, not coming through, because, because see, see, final material is this one. Is this one. It has, it has six, six uh, phosphorus, phosphorus atoms, atoms. And, and one, one copper. copper. But, but the only the source, source of copper of and phosphorus, phosphorus in their, in their uh, description, uh, description is copper three phosphorus. How can How you can use you three atoms, atoms of copper and one and phosphorus, phosphorus and get, and get Six phosphorus, phosphorus and, one and one copper. Where is the rest, of, the copper? rest of copper? So it, so it cannot, it copper cannot is not sulfur, sulfur or oxygen. Or oxygen. It, cannot it cannot evaporate that easily, that easily. at, at these low at temperatures low of synthesis. synthesis. So, something so something is here which is either is not described, described or, or uh, they, uh, they maybe, maybe are doing, doing some selection, selection from multi-phase multi sample. sample. I don't know, I don't know. but something that is not. And and people who were repeating steps of original, original uh, discoverers, discoverers uh, literally, literally following, following their, their uh, recipe, recipe, they were failing. They were failing. So one, so such, one group such group was in, was in India, India and, and uh, Dr. Avana, and I wrote, wrote him a letter, him a letter that dear Dr. Dr. Avana, because this guy's original, original group is so busy so these days that they will not, not respond. respond. So I decided, I decided to talk to, talk to people who tried to reproduce. I, 
ask, how can you, how can you uh, uh, accept this kind of situation with copper and phosphorus? And he said, your query very uh, right, so nice of you, so so. And he said that I myself wrote a letter to Koreans. Here is his letter. He's asking the same question. I don't think that he got any answer. However, despite there is obvious controversy, he thinks that uh, this is this is uh, Havana's group is here. So see, uh, despite there is arithmetical arithmetical discrepancy, he says that no superconductor is absent, but the synthesis wasn't done well, or something is not accomplished as it should. So uh, these are other groups you can see mainly from Korea, India, China. Uh, and the uh, Korea, uh, they have also patent filed. And the last thing which I learned from them is that they change the status of their company from research to manufacturing. So probably they are absolutely aware that they are on the right track. Uh, and the uh, United States uh, is only one, one person, uh, solely US, uh, this guy. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, one is in group with Spain and Germany, but uh, experimentalists are mainly uh, uh, negative, but I will talk more a little bit about that. For example, uh, this one, look, this is X-ray diffractogram. Uh, and uh, from one of the critical articles, I don't remember from which one, but look, this uh, violet is the observation experimental, and they think that their observation is matching what it should, which are these red lines. But indeed it is not. For example, this line uh, doesn't have, uh, what about others? They have so different pattern, uh, they think that they reproduce, but I wouldn't call this reproduction of of the original original material. For and this other one, this is unfortunately Koreans didn't provide any uh, elemental uh, analysis uh, uh, data. So uh, this is again by the other group, which is claiming that we are not able to reproduce original findings. But let's see what do they have here. Uh, uh, they have. Copper, copper, which is one, which is one but, we but we know that know phosphorus, phosphorus should be six, should be six and it is and not six. Is not six. So can we so believe can that criticism is serious? I am not thinking that the criticism is serious. This is a very nice book called Cold War's History of Superconductivity, wrote by George Weissand. This is famous guy. And this is talking about, in particular, the discovery of YBCO superconductors. It, yeah, five minutes, yeah. Five minutes. I'm, go I'm getting to end. So uh, he, uh, uh, at the time when uh, Bednarz and Müller discovered at Rushlikon their material in the neighboring door, there was another physicist who later became a uh, very, uh, how to say, authoritative person. He wasn't able to reproduce their, their material next door uh, because he, they were using liquid passage to uh, based, based synthesis. He was trying to use solid state and he wasn't uh, able to do that. So reproducing results, especially if the guys are doing that, Korean guys I mean, for decades and or decades and eventually go to what they want. And this is another explanation uh, which we did in our lab. So this is very interesting story. Uh, uh, this is niobium uh, deposited on uh, sapphire. This, uh, this uh, uh, plus thin layer of niobium deposited on sapphire, and on top of that we deposited lead. So these white bulbs are lead uh, on on top of uh, niobium. And uh, see, uh, lead transition temperature of lead is 7.2 Kelvin. And we see that at about 7.2 Kelvin, instead of going down, it is going up. So 
So temperature tells that inevitably it is related to superconductivity. But instead of going down, it is going up. So, uh, and this is, this is actually what is it doing, uh, the same transition when it is going up, but zoomed and the different fields. So it's definitely going up. And uh, if you will go ahead and use this field in magnetometer and measure, you will see that it is behaving magnetically as superconductor should do, but only in the field of 300 or so. If you will go to 1,000, instead of going down as it should, it will go up. So this is telling very good example how a multi-phase system, so uh, this is two-dimensional example of the three-dimensional ceramic when the superconducting inclusions can be surrounded by different phase. Instead of going down as resistance should do, it will go up. So you should, you should always keep in mind that this all is not very straightforward. And uh, theoreticians are much more, so uh, theoreticians make cal calculations using quantum physics, quantum mechanics, density function of theory or uh, something like similar, and see majorly that supporting that this could happen. And um, in, in case of Diaz, uh, Rochester group findings, they were you, uh, uh, almost unanimously telling that it is theoretically impossible what Diaz is reporting, but, but this, in this case, they say that it is possible. So, uh, and this is our plan, how we are planning to do that. We would like to just use, this is our deposition system. It has many magnetrons in a row. We can use them simultaneously. So we would like just to take copper, lead, phosphorus, and regulate the fluxes and put them on the surface of the substrate uh, using the proportion which is required, and then bake it and see what we will get. We may have very pure phase which will superconduct right away, and that is what, what uh, we have also very good feedback uh, for elemental microanalysis and for X-ray diagnostics. So. Uh, how do uh, I think that months or two, uh, I, I would like the main one problem is one of the targets which I need. They said only September 6 it will be available. So we need to wait until target will come. But then immediately we will, we will do it. So, um, and then um, I would like this, I would like to finish with this. Um, uh, and uh, no, but this will take five minutes. So this is very interesting story called uh, uh, the level of noise. I, I asked Shmuel, does he know about that? And a couple of colleagues, they don't know. I will just start, but not finish. You can later look for that yourself. Uh, it is. There's a meeting called in the Pentagon. The chiefs of staff all come to the meeting. And there's a president's representative there, and there's this big table. In the middle of the table is a plastic wrapped bunch of burned junk. And it was sealed up airtight, you know, tied off anyway. And uh, the president's aide tells the assembled scientists and professors who have been called in from all the United States and the, and the generals, he says, look, I know you're not going to believe what we're about to tell you, but something extraordinary happened last week, and we need your help to solve the mystery. He said, we have some of it on film. We were testing this young fellow's device. Um, he's kind of a smart alley, uh, but uh, we were testing it last week with him, and here's the film we took. And so they opened up the curtain, and the film starts. And you see this young, kind of red-haired, freckled-faced scientist looking smart alley, you know, really a bright genius type. And he's got this little chest pack and a backpack and a little belt, and he's standing in front of some of the generals there in a football stadium. And he, Reaches down, he pushes a button, and he lifts up off the deck, two or three feet. He just stands there in the air. Nobody says a word in the office there in the Pentagon. They're thinking, wow. Okay, so he's been lifted up a bit. Then he pushes another button, and he rotates sideways and lifts up about 40 feet. and takes off, flies around the football field, and comes back around for a low pass over the general. Everybody ducks, and there's a puff of smoke. Quick explosion. He nose dives into the deck and dies. A ball of flame. The package on the table holds the remains of the guy's instrument, what's left after the fire melted everything together. He said, gentlemen, he died before he told us how he did it. This guy doesn't work for his government. He's just an individual. He doesn't have any university grants. He's just an individual, and he did this. Now, you've got to figure out how he did it. We've got his apartment. We've got his library. We've got his lab. We've got everything. 
you go and take these notes apart and figure out how he did this. Well, well, everybody runs over in a big gaggle to this guy's apartment. They look through his library. He's got chemistry here, physics here, philosophy, uh, ancient mysticism, uh, everything. And he's got a lathe room and, and downstairs in the second floor area here. And then he's got over here, he's got biochemistry and all kinds of stuff. And they say, could one guy have read all of this? And they start looking through some of the volumes, and there's notes, annotations in the margin. Well, where are his other notes? Couldn't find them. Weeks, months passed as they puzzled over how he did it. And groups all over the United States, for like Martin Marriott and some of the other larger corporations, had scientists gathered together trying to figure out how did he do it. One guy was out fishing, one of the scientists. And he's throwing his line into the water. And as it hit, ripples went out, and there was a swirling vortex next to a rock. And he saw how the splashing water moved some twigs that came together, pulled in by the vortex, and stuck together. He says, I've got it. I understand gravity now. They went running back, and a month later, they rang the guys at the Pentagon and said, we've done it. It's 30 feet in diameter, and it's about a foot thick, and it weighs 15 tons, and it only moves off the floor an inch, but we've got anti-gravity. Well, the Pentagon said, get your notes, get over here quick. Everybody is reassembled into the Pentagon in the same room. They show the film, the test, to all the other guys who weren't there, and they say, wow, fantastic. The guy that called the bank said, gentlemen, I want you to meet someone. Very special. Curtain opens, and out comes the red-headed scientist, the dead one. And they said, what is this? They said, well, he's an actor. He never existed as we told it to you. We had to remove the noise level from your mind to say that it is possible to get you to work on it. Now, I tell you this for a reason. Two streams of events have been following the UFO circumstance, the real alien or fallen ones strain, chain, and the one where the noise level has been removed in certain scientists' minds to get them to develop this. We have developed anti-gravity. I was recruited way after they got it for the first time because I came up with a method of... Um, powering a saucer craft using an ionized air plasma, which I'll explain to you later. In that program, under Dr. Teller, I was sent down to Australia. And so I've been privy to things you would never see. You would never, ever see. And I'm going to show you some of those things as best I can re recreate them today so that you'll understand that mankind has, on his own accord, done some of this. Okay, so this was from Ginsburg included in his book. So I am almost done. And one more thing I would like to show you, which is telling why we should believe in, in this finding. So uh, there is a big difference because some people say that this may be diamagnetism, but not superconductivity. I would like to show you what is the difference between superconducting levitation and diamagnetic levitation. So just very short movie. This is diamagnetic levitation. This is my voice. So that the field in the middle is the weakest. And now I will suspend uh, pyrolytic graphite. Okay, so it is suspended. It is in local equilibrium. A little bit, if I will move it, see, it is flying away. And uh, this is very different from what Koreans did. Okay, now okay, what Cadians did is here. here. You probably have, probably seen, have this, seen this, but uh, uh, look, look what is different. What is different? It, will it will not fly away. The diamagnetism, the diamagnetism it, should it should be this local, local minimum, minimum of magnetic, of magnetic field, field in the center, it's keeping it there. It, it, is it is not uh, anything uh, which, is, uh, which is tying it, but this is, this is what Cadians sample is doing. And it will not fall down as it, you will see, it will fall down, and then, and then it is, it is jumping, jumping up. up. So uh, this is real, real uh, diamagnetism, uh, the real superconductivity versus, versus diamagnetism. So uh, this, is, uh, this is another superconductor. See, this is Möbius, Möbius pa, uh, 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 strip. So it can, it can be suspended from underneath of it. So superconductor, not only levitating, but it is also tied to the, to the magnet. It will not leave the magnet. It is 
underneath and not leaving the magnet. So that is, if you know that, you will never uh, say that uh, uh, it is diamagnetic, what, what the Koreans did. So this Möbius, uh, this uh, 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 levitation at room temperature, I have a small kit. So this is my second, second present to you here. Just, uh, you can levitate. Uh, uh, inside you have uh, the two, two uh, graph, graph, pyrality graphites. Here they are. And you can, what I just did, you can, you can do. Here is a magnet. Don't put near your credit cards because it will destroy them. Yeah, and here, this is it. So if you will put these guys and bring it close to it, it will, it will levitate. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, very <you're> welcome. <laughs> So, uh, so uh, and the last and click, the last click. So, to Yakir's 100th birthday, let's have, this, let's have this, this at Chapman without any uh, liquid nitrogen, 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 just room temperature room superconductor, temperature levitating, levitating, so that the students will be attracted, be attracted and, and we will, <laughs> we will have <laughs> celebration of superconductivity <laughs> and quantum physics here. That's it. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. I haven't read any of the original uh, Korean papers or the follow-up papers, so <coughs> what I'm saying is not a statement, it's a question. I, I read the editorial of Nature uh, today and uh, some uh, recent uh, seminar on the about this, and uh, they, they all seem to be very conclusive against uh, superconductivity. Uh, and as far as levitation is concerned, they note that, that there is an edge which sticks out also in your uh, movie. And uh, for some reason, the, the expert says that this is a, 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 a clear evidence. Yeah, I can address that. Yeah, I understood. So, 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 what, what, what is your, it's a, it's a question, I, I'm neutral. Yeah. But what is your reaction to this conclusive, overwhelming uh, opinion? And let me add one, one thing, that they, the authors, the Korean authors, uh, were, were asked about all this, and they did not respond. Uh, I would say the following, that um, I know that example and superconductivity and magnetism in solid states may be very close to each other. A little bit that way, a little bit this way, and instead of magnet you will get superconductor and vice versa. And uh, what they uh, are uh, referring to is that you can have some, some um, uh, kind, of kind of magnetic material, material which, which uh, will, uh, if we will go, we will go back, back, it will be, uh, will be uh, just, just instead, instead of, of where is my, instead of, instead of flying like, like it is like flying, it will stick it will vertically stick like, this. like this. In principle, In principle that, that is what, is what, what what two groups, two groups have, obtained, have obtained, but, uh, but uh, like, in, like mathematics, in mathematics, as soon as, as you have one counterexample, uh, any, any argument, argument that, that this is true, this is it will true, not be will correct as soon as you have our counterexample. Counter so if we will consider this as a mathematical counterexample, counter the, pro the theorem is proven. Yeah, proven. So, uh, so uh, they, if they are cheating, they are that cheating, is another. another. In, principle, In principle, for example, you can cover you this, you can have configuration have like, this. like this, and here, here underneath, under if you will make some weak magnetic area, in principle, you can mimic something like that, but that will mean obvious cheating. Obvious so cheating. if, so if uh, the answer, the is, answer the is the following, if they are not, they are not direct, direct cheaters, cheaters then, then all the all evidence, the evidence we have that they got superconductors. Yeah. yeah, thank you. I just wanted to comment that uh, if uh, I understood what you said about uh, the ginsburg blunder equation, when you said I want to to take the form as Schrodinger equation as imaginary Hamiltonian, am I correct? No, not necessarily. So what was that imaginary uh, no, I don't want to work with Hamiltonians. I would like to work with uh, with Ginzburg-Landau equations, 
but uh, to do more to relate it with a measurement problem. Measurement problem, uh, in which case, uh, one thing, since you are asking, I will tell you. When uh, you consider um, uh, without fluctuations, when superconductivity dies, it is psi is becoming very small, but it is on the level of 10 to the minus 44, it is still there. It is not it is completely, not completely dead, dead, but I but think that I think it will that be completely dead completely if we will consider fluctuations, fluctuations in, which in which case we will have closer have relationship with real, uh, uh, real physical, physical measurement, measurement, which, which, which nobody, nobody did, and I would like somehow, somehow to tap into that, into that but have, have not yet had the chance. Yeah, but I must say, say that uh, if you consider the GL equation, and uh, you want it to take the form of imaginary variable Hamiltonian, I must say that you, you said it psi, why you don't say it is a wave function? Because in that case, it will not be a wave function, it will not be any um, uh, interference pattern, it simply will be a modified version of the heat equation. Oh, oh, yes, it, uh, uh, that, is, that is what they were considering until uh, Yakir told me that Armen, instead of considering it as a sort of heat equation or diffusional equation, you can consider it that as a Schrodinger with imaginary Hamiltonian. So that is what I wasn't daring to do because I didn't know that imaginary Hamiltonians are allowed in quantum physics, but Yakir told me that they are. And I am sorry, I am not, I, I tried to find some literature. Uh, I didn't have much time, but I wasn't very successful in finding this kind of works. Yeah, but 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 that doesn't mean that they don't exist. They should some they should be somewhere there. So we we should get there at some point. I think Adi, did you have your hand up? Yes. Uh, uh, no, I think, I think that if somebody will reproduce it, it will be proved because they provided enough, enough evidence that it is superconductor. The major thing is that others are not able to reproduce. That is a major hurdle. Uh, but uh, uh, you, yeah, as, I said, as I said, these people, these people, these people spend, uh, spend according to, according to in the Korean, the, there is an article in Korean, uh, we use Google Translator and translated that Korean article, in, and it is, they, in, in that article, they tell how many years they were doing this, all their failures, and so on, and so on. So if, of course, when you are uh, um, uh, running behind the front runner, you have, uh, you have benefit, benef yes, you can, you can make it much faster, but you still need to spend comparable time. It is, in YBCO case, it became very easy to reproduce, and at that time, people were telling that even housekeeper can do that in her kitchen, uh, this material YBCO. But as I said, the first one, which original Bednerts and Mueller one, the person next door wasn't able to reproduce. So, but, but it, gener it really was superconductor, and he wasn't able to reproduce. Until YBCO arrived, YBCO is much easier to reproduce use on lantern and strontium original which Bednerts and Mueller discovered. So I think that as soon as they will reproduce, that will be it, I think. And why these people are not telling the whole truth? From, from my point of view, it is multi-phase sample. We need to get to the right phase to get it, uh, to, to we need to extract the right phase from the mixture. When you say 10 to the minus 9 of centimeters. Yeah, it's. It depends on how many, in one sample it can be artifact, but if they made it on many samples, it's, they don't describe too much. You know, they are a sort of, um, they are not physicists, I would say. They are more chemists than physicists. But sometimes science is being done by dilettantes. They are dilettantes in superconductivity, but they know a lot. They know a lot, they, they are skillful. It is not that they are just, uh, you know, amateur, amateur persons, no. 
No, no. <laughs> this is this is respectful group. So we need to respect first of all, and give them some respect, and then only start cri criticizing is easy. <laughs> it's very easy to criticize. <laughs> to make a couple of comments about both of these room temperature superconductivity uh, examples we've been talking about. So I know less about the LK99, but my understanding is, is that the material is not particularly exotic, that many groups can, in principle, reproduce this material relatively quickly. And indeed, the results that have been trying to reproduce it so far have failed. But I wanted to, the point I wanted to make is that the material itself is not particularly exotic. It should be relatively straightforward to fabricate. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll pause and ask you to comment on that before I go to the next uh, comment. This, these arithmetics, uh, uh, and you, this arithmetic is, is raising obvious question. How are they balancing? How are they taking three coppers and one phosphorus and getting one copper and six phosphorus? This is very, very simple question. And our critics, they have a group, they tried 10 different recipes. And they say, we tried 10, but that doesn't mean that 11 will not give you what. Yeah, I, I also have some information that MIT delegated three researchers to Korean, uh, Korean Institute to, to see on site what is going on, but I haven't heard of any report about that. So in your attempts to reproduce this, then which recipe are you going with? Uh, you uh, should you be, should uh, be uh, uh, that is very good question. Uh, and the matter is that uh, this material is very hygroscopic. One possibility was to use, you need using copper, applying copper and applying lead is not a problem, of course. Right? Then uh, phosphorus, phosphorus is what is creating problem because if you will take P2O5, you can take P2O5, which sublimes at about 300 centigrade temperature. Then it is unfortunately uh, crazily absorbing water. And when it is absorbing water, it is becoming phosphoric acid, H3PO4. And this phosphoric acid very aggressively reacting with metals, all my half million dollar chamber will be ruined in one, uh, as soon as I will open it to air after deposition, all the walls will become acidly corroded. So you, sh you should be very cautious what are you doing, how are you doing. So I'm... Uh, I am trying to get uh, copper. There is there is copper phosphorus uh, or oh, lead 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 phosphorus or copper phosphorus that is solid solid target. So then you will not probably have this. But still should be very cautious. How are you doing that? So and and then oxygen problem. Oxygen problem. In principle, we have also ion gun which can bombard during the deposition. You can bombard by oxygen ion ions to get it saturated by because see it is almost completely oxygen. Out of 41 or so atoms here, 25 is oxygen. So it's mainly oxygen like YBCO. YBCO has same same thing. It is uh, out of out of uh, so it has about seven oxygens and six other elements. So uh, majority is oxygen, is there and here. I'll just make one very short other statement about the Diaz results. I, so I have been following this very carefully, and I just wanted to comment that there have been a number of very serious allegations of fraud raised in this case. Not only plagiarism, That's true. Not plagiarism data fabrication, data manipulation. Not only was the Nature paper retracted, there's an upcoming PRL we published, it was also retracted. So there's, a, there's very serious cause for concern about this uh, research coming out of this group. I just want to caution you that it's quite possible this is all fraud. So, so be, yeah. be aware. Yeah, that's yeah, true. That's yeah, of course, you should be cautious. Yeah. I agree with that, absolutely.这个总体来说呀
，是八月二十八号的生日，所以这个视频大家可以看到，论文也是八月份的，这是一个老视频，但是呢，我们是刚刚看到啊，就给大家介绍到这儿，谢谢大家收看，咱们下次再见，拜拜。